Welcome back, this is The Network Berg, and in this lecture we'll be looking specifically at logging on Microtech devices. So hopefully this isn't a too long lecture, I wanted to separate this a bit from the other subjects, but this is definitely information that you can use to figure out if something is happening on your network, and this I'll also show you where to look at your logs. Alrighty, so let's jump into the video. Now Microtech allows you to view all of the logs on the log menu which is basically just this big old <laughs> menu telling you exactly which time and date an issue has occurred. So this is definitely a reason why you want to make sure your Microtech has the correct time and date settings. It'll tell you where the log is being stored on this buffer. So if, if it's in memory or if it's in disk, what type of topic it is. is it, so this you can specify down to a T, but typically there's four types of logs by default that are enabled that will always be shown in your memory. So I'm going to show you how to tweak this so that you can view a bit more or different things happening on your logging. So for that, you can go to your system and logging. And an example is I added this DNS rule. So rules are in essence, different types of topics that you want to display on the log filter or that you want to save on your router board for debugging purposes so that you can potentially give that information to somebody to look over or for you to look over and see where an issue could potentially be. Um, I just first want to go to the actions because actions will effectively tell you uh, when you look at the rules, there's an action associated with it. So you can set actions and specify what the rule does. So also by default, there's a few ones like there's disk logging. So this will be uh, set on your Microtech. There's an echo, which will just basically uh, say it in this log field. There's memory, which will store it in your Microtech's memory. And if the memory runs full, you're probably going to have a bad time. And there's remote. So if you have a syslogging server, a place where you want to send all of this, the, the logging information to, you could potentially put in the syslog server's IP address, uh, which source you're sending this from, apply that, and then you could use that to send syslog information. Um, it's pretty limited what you can do here, even if we're adding a new one. Uh, but what's, I, I'd say this is more or less useful if you maybe have multiple syslogging servers, or if you want to do something like you saw, there was an email option so you can email the logs uh, to yourself. What is nice, you can change the amount of logs on a file. So let's say you're using the disk logging and we'll create a new log file. It will call it like log or whatever with a date. And then um, it will save a thousand lines. And once it reaches that thousand line threshold, it will then go to another thousand lines and then it will stop. If, um, if it does reach that threshold, it, it might just create new log files and just continue until either your file system is full or you stop logging. All right, so that covers the action. Let's just look at the rules quickly. So by default, these blue rules are active and this will tell you if something happens on your Microtech. If somebody tries to log in, it will show it there under the system info logs. It will tell you, hey, admin tried to log in. If there's some type of um, error that happened because the Microtech rebooted, it will definitely show that as well if it lost power. So these are definitely nice logs to see. I just wanna show you in the rules how you can tweak some of the stuff to appear either when you're saving the logs to uh, a file or if you just want to view it in the log viewer. So we can just add a new rule. And similar as before, I had a DNS rule, but you, you see there's many different topics. There's, there's stuff for like account or BGP or bridge or interface. And you can put in the interface and you can sp specify like the prefixes, the stuff that you want to specifically drill down into. But let's do something pretty straightforward. I'm going to select DNS and I'm going to disk log this. I'll apply. And then what I want to do is, I can see there's 118 items at the moment. So I'll open up a new terminal. And there we can already see their user admin logged in via local. But let's do a ping www.google.com. I'll hit enter. And if I go back to my logs, you can actually see all of the events that occurred when it was trying to get to Google, which is really nice. I can see it, it queried Google, it got an IP address, what the name servers were. And this is great if we're trying to debug something because we can potentially see exactly what is happening with that specific topic. So it doesn't need to be DNS, it can be 
any of those topics that we saw and it will give you a nice influx of information to go through. As I mentioned, if you go to your file system, you will see that the files get saved. So there's a log.zero.txt and I can download this onto my desktop, for example. And if I navigate to the log file, I open it up. There are all the logs that I was capturing. So this, if I was specifically looking at something to debug, I could save this file, go through it at my own pace, you know, control F, see if I can find any specific errors, or if I wanted to attach this to maybe send an email to the Microtech support, I can now do this as well. Alrighty, so that covers logging on Microtech. I hope you enjoyed, I'll catch you in the next lesson.